Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, aka I Be Crazy, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make my cloverleaf circularly polarized omnidirectional antenna. The cloverleaf antenna has more or less revolutionized FPV by making the video crystal clear when coupled with another circularly polarized antenna. Couple this antenna with another cloverleaf, a skew planer wheel, a mad mushroom, a fan, or even better, for long range, you can do a helical, a crosshair, a pepper box, or even a gatling. Before we get into the construction of this antenna, a little bit about its history. Back in early 2011, I was researching the wheel antenna to be a 5.5 dBIC directional antenna to couple with a skew planer wheel but I couldn't quite get it to work. On its simulation, I tweaked the geometry a little bit and eventually removed the ground plane and brought the sides up, and suddenly I had a new circularly polarized Omni that was greatly improved, and now this antenna has more or less become the industry standard in FPV. Now, building it isn't that entirely difficult, and I highly encourage anybody that wants to build it to do so. Typically, the cable you build it on is a piece of RG316 cable. However, my antennas and my kits that I sell are built on a mil-spec cable of a slightly higher quality for best signal. To build this antenna, you're going to need a few tools. You'll either need a knife, or even better, a pair of wire strippers to strip the cable. You'll need some kind of measuring device, such as a caliper, if you're going to build it from scratch. If you're building my kits, this has already been taken care of for you. And, of course, you're going to need a good soldering iron. I recommend a nice temperature-controlled soldering iron. If that's not available, a cheap one of low wattage, 15 to 25 watts, will do just fine. But once you go to temperature-controlled iron, you'll never go back. It's worth its weight in gold. So with that, I'll show you how to build it. I'm going to show you two different ways to build this antenna. The first method is my personal method that I've been using for years. The second method was come up was invented by David Windestall from Flight Test and also RC Explorer SE. Now there are a bunch of jigs out there, a lot of people making all kinds of different tools to make these. But in all honesty, I find it easiest to freehand them. And I'm going to show you just how I do that. The first thing you need to do is straighten out your lobes a little bit, just so they look about where they should be. Next, if you're using my method, I take a pair of pliers, grab the end, and bend a very small hook on the end of the wire. Then I grab this down here, and bend over for right hand circularly polarized. Do this to all three lobes. Now you want to keep that hook very short because it takes away from the effective length of the antenna. right hand circularly polarized. Next, you need to prep the cable. Now I'm going to assume that you don't have a pair of wire strippers, so I'll simply show you how to do it with a knife. Simply take the knife and roll it over the cable, cutting into the outside, and do the exact same thing with the center element. You want to leave this as close as possible without shorting the antenna out. This length now you simply find a way to mount it to make it easy. I like using helping hands but when those aren't available simply jamming it between a book and putting a weight on it works great. All right, now on to the construction. Take your soldering iron. If you have a temperature-controlled soldering iron, I recommend between 600 
and 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And what you want to do is tin your cable. Put a good amount of solder on it, making sure you coat all sides. Then, another little trick to grab right there and bend another hook into the cable. Then trim the end off. <clears throat> Next, take your lobe. and tin the bottom half. Heat it up and stick it to the shield. Once dry, rotate it and move on to the next lobe. All right, now to bond the second lobe. The trick here is to heat this lobe and this area up without heating the other lobe to the point where the lobe drops off. So to do this, I take my soldering iron right at the, right at the bend, right at the top of the cable, heat up both parts until it starts to liquefy. When it does, release the heat. Then simply take a little bit of solder and touch up the bottom, letting it dry. Turn it over, prepare to do your final leg. Same method as before. Heat a small portion of the cable, let it bond, and touch up the bottom. Be very careful when doing the touch-ups that you don't overheat the whole cable and cause the lobe to fall off. You're just simply adding solder for extra bond here. Now to solder the top. First, bend the thing back to geometry by grabbing the center of the cable. and bending the lobes to the approximate shape. Tilt angle should be 45 degrees. Once bent close, take your hooks and then hook them around each other into the center. Then simply add solder. And there you have it, a cloverly circularly polarized antenna. Now for the David Windestall method. To build the antenna via the David Windestall method, again, you're gonna strip your cable, but not quite as far down as before. Now for this, what you do is you simply take your shield and fray it outward. Now, because we have three lobes, we're going to make three groupings out of the shield and twist them up as shown. Get them to the proper spacing. 
and take a little solder. Tin them up. Now, if you have any little stragglers like that, make sure you get them bonded up very nicely. Otherwise, they'll cause spurs. And those spurs are no good. But again, we need to remove this insulation. Trim a little bit off. And again, I'm going to roll my knife over it. And again, we're going to bend a small hook at the top. Like that. Now the load prep is a little bit different. We need to trim a little bit off of our cable on both sides. Trim off as much as you've left insulation shown in the cable strip. And then trim back your hook so there's just a very, very, very small hook like that. Tin up your wire and install your lobe, making sure you have the proper polarization direction. Now again, take your lobes and hook it just around the center wire. Add your solder. And there you have it two different ways to build the same antenna. Which way should you build? Well, honestly, it's whatever you think is going to work best for you. Building, I find my method easiest, but most modelers are going to find David Windestall's method a little bit easier. Mine is a lot more durable than this method. In either case, add a little bit of epoxy here to the feed point and make sure you wrap it around the bottoms underneath the lobes so it creates a basically a ball that locks everything into place so when you crash and this thing gets deformed it won't break. Use a good clear epoxy. Do not use a steel or metal reinforced epoxy like JB Weld otherwise you're going to short out your antenna. And then when you're done of course go ahead and paint it or in my case I dipped it in HCF water-based acrylic. And that's it. I'm Ivy Crazy. Keep your wings in the sky.